And, and the, the thing is, are, are we really ignorant as to how infidelity happens? I mean, we're not. It's like James is talking about. You know what? I, I can imagine that probably, you know, there are the guys that, uh, there, are the, there are the guys that they just, they pray on women, they get into places of power, and they pray on them. Their idea right up front is they, they I mean, they've, there, there's, no, there's no restraint. But I have a feeling that a lot of the men that fall, they never thought they would. They did not start out intending to. I mean, how, how does infidelity happen when there at first is no intention to it? It doesn't happen like that. Yeah, it happens by stages, by degrees, by steps. And what happened? Well, sexual immorality is a matter of the heart. What happens is the heart gets... The heart gets involved. The affections, the emotions. And how does it happen? Well, through communication. Certainly through communication. And, and what happens is, you, you know there's communication that goes back and forth, and then we're, we're, not, we're not ignorant about this. And, and the thing is, if you're in ministry, you're, a, you're especially going to be a target of of the devil and it's just a uh, casual that's the thing it's just it's dangerous it's just it's dangerous and and the thing is it you know it's private you end up having private communication with a woman who's not your wife when you do have a wife and that's exactly the kind of communication where suddenly you know the hook goes in the now, speaking strong words like that, and I believe they're words that need to be spoken, but we often see people who, who, who say these strong things, obviously, into temptation. We've seen the four great people. When you travel, and you travel a lot, mm -hmm. you know, we, God, God calls to be people with clean hands and, and right. a pure heart. What you, as, 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 uh, as much as we are so grateful for your preaching ministry, we know that you are a man. Right. A man, uh, a man of, 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 of a, who still has a sinful nature. Uh -huh. As you travel and in your everyday life and with the missionaries you have at heart cry, what measures do you put in place just to protect us from our own sinful nature? What, what things do you do and what standards do you expect when you use the term beyond reproach right. in the heart cry manual? Well, let me say this. Uh, there was a very wise man who, um, you know, said no to his uh, teenage son uh, going out kind of on a date with a girl by himself. And uh, someone said to him, he's a pastor, someone said to him, what's wrong with you? Don't you trust your son? And he said, uh, well, of course not. I don't trust my son. I don't trust his father. Now, now, the point that he's making here is, hold on, this is not about me as an elder man uh, keeping my son or restraining my son from doing something I would do. I wouldn't even do what you're asking me to allow my son to do. As you notice, when I, when I was in Holland last year, I was traveling with a companion. Yes. With a young, with a young man from our ministry. And what was the purpose of that? Did I need someone doing internet for me? Did I need someone uh, opening doors or carrying luggage? Absolutely not. He had one purpose, and that purpose was told to him by me. It was told to him by the leaders of our mission, elders, everything else. You go there. You do not let Paul Washer out of your sight. You watch him like a hawk. You don't let anybody get close to him, especially of the opposite sex in, in any sort of setting that could be dangerous. You see, here's the thing. When it comes to immorality, especially sexual immorality, this is what you need to understand. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 6 that we are in a spiritual battle and literally we are to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the devil. That, I mean wrestle, face-to-face, -face, hand hand-to-hand combat with the devil. But when Paul talks to Timothy... 
about youthful lust as sexual immorality, he says run. He doesn't say fight it. He doesn't say, you know, fight against it, wrestle it. He says run. And what he's saying basically this, I don't care who you are, and I don't care who you think you are, or how spiritual you believe yourself to be. If you are with someone of the opposite sex that you are attracted to, if you are with them long enough in a setting alone, you are going to commit sexual immorality. It's not a question of, of if, it's only a question of when. It is. It is a question of when. And so what we have to do of as... Of course, there would also be a lot of people who would love to, to pin that charge against you because they're right. so annoyed by your preaching. Right. They'd love to pin something like that on you. Exactly, and we're aware of that. Mm. Look, um, look what we do to our... our, our well, look what we do to our children. We wonder why do even Christian children, children from Christian households, even children that seem to walk with the Lord, and what I'm talking about is teenagers, why they fall into sexual immorality. Well, look what we're doing to them. We're feeding them to the devil. First of all, we allow things to enter into our homes via media that just 30 years ago, at least in my country, would have been against the law. I mean, it's pornographic. So we allow that to come into our home. Then we allow teenagers, 16 years old, even younger now, 15, 14, to go out together and be alone. Now, let's say that I go to Denmark and uh, you've got me staying in a little hotel that also has a uh, little kitchen in it. It's like a little apartment. You're letting me stay there a week while I teach there in Denmark. Well, one day you come over to pick me up in your car and uh, you uh, just walk in, and you see me there making cookies with a single lady of my age from Denmark. We're in there in the kitchen making cookies, laughing, having a good time. If, if you're a man of God, you're going to cancel the meetings immediately. Just because of that, I'm not going to be preaching now. And you're going to look at me, and you're going to say, are you out of your mind? You are in this apartment alone? with a woman that's not your wife in a foreign country far away from your wife. And I say, yeah, but we're just making cookies. I mean, what's the big deal? Are you crazy? You're alone with a woman. Now, I'm 47 years old. I have a lot more to lose than a teenager. If I fall into immorality, I could lose my wife, my children, definitely my ministry, and all the missionaries that we support are probably going to lose their support. I've got a lot more to lose than a 16-year-old. So if it's insane for me to put myself in a situation like that, how insane is it for us to put young people together in a situation like that? Whether it be alone in a car or wherever, sooner or later they're going to fall. I had a young seminary student come to me years ago godly and he wasn't I mean he's the real deal and he came to me and he was weeping and I said you know he was a real man's man so I was like really disturbed what's, what's going on he said brother Paul he goes I just can't take it anymore I said what he said uh, me and my girlfriend who was also uh, just honest wanted to serve the Lord with all her heart we, we pray we fast we read the word together but every once in a while, when we're alone together, we haven't fallen in that we've had intercourse or anything like that, but we have done things that afterwards we have been so ashamed of. It's about to destroy our relationship, and it's about to destroy my ministry. Now, it wasn't frequent, but it happened enough to really just set him aside. Now, I said, well, what do your counselors tell you? And he said, well, they tell me that this is a tough time. You know, she's my fiance. We're not married yet, yet we're attracted to each other. And we need to pray and read the word and things like that. And I said, you go back and tell your counselors to stop counseling because they're fools. And if you want to, use my name. I said, young man, listen. They're telling you to get as spiritual as possible so that when you violate God's principles, you won't fall. 
Now that doesn't make a lot of sense. I said, young man, God tells you not to be alone with her in any situation that might lead to you falling. She should not be over at your apartment. You should not be over at hers unless, it's, unless she's visiting with her mom and dad or some other godly people. You should not be alone because if you are alone long enough, you will fall. And so that's, that's the whole point. We're trying to get godly enough so that when we violate biblical principles, we don't fall. And that's not going to happen. The heart.